it's a very short song and it's a song that we all know. But in the last few weeks and months, I've just been singing it because I just, I love the meaning. It's invincible. Invincible. I checked the, the dictionary for the meaning of invincible. And it says, cannot be conquered, cannot be defeated. And that's the God we serve. You know, he's a God that cannot be conquered. No situation, no mountain can conquer him. No difficulty can overcome our God. You know, he's undefeatable. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that you serve such a wonderful God? You are worthy, O Lord. You are worthy, O Lord. Invincible God. Father, we thank you 
For the entrance of your word that give light and understanding to the simple. As we study your word this morning, for this brief time, we pray that you speak to us. Give us an understanding heart to receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Very quickly, Mark 11, verse 20 to 22. Mark 11, verse 20 to 22. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou causest is withered away. Verse 22. And Jesus answered, said unto them, Have faith in God. Jesus said unto them, have faith in God. How many people have faith in God here? Hallelujah. Amen. Another translation said, Have faith in God, but it said simply, Trust in God. Trust in God. And our title today is Trust in God. Don't somebody say Trust in God. Trust in God. See, the person you are sitting to, with and you are talking to, might not be trustable or trustworthy. But God is trustworthy. Amen? Amen. That's the only difference. Talk to somebody again and say, trust in God. Trust in God. One thing about trust is that it's never lacking between two people that are in love. Isn't it? Between husband and wife. It's never lacking between the father and the children or mother and the children. It's never lacking between the children. Trust is a word that it's, that establishes that you have relationship with people. In Proverbs chapter 3, which our brother used this morning in our prayer, very good. Chapter 3, verse 5, which says what? Trust in the Lord, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not on your own understanding. Again, trust, trust in, in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not on thy own understanding. God's word translation says, trust the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. I thought understanding is good. I understand that everyone that goes to school must have a good work, a job that they do. Everyone that passed through the corners of the, or the walls of the university and finished well must have a good job, isn't it? It's an understanding that when you work hard, then you have money, isn't it? That's an understanding. It's an understanding that when a man and a woman, you see, that are married, it's an understanding that they must have children, isn't it? But this understanding, God says we should not rely on it. Why would we not rely on what we know, what we have come to understand? It's because understanding at times might fail you. What you know might be the one that will obstruct you from trusting God. So we are looking at trust in the Lord. What happened in the past, what we have learned from people, we understand. It can be an experience. What you yourself I have experienced in your life can be an understanding that you hold on to. But at what point does what you understand to be the truth, at what point would that thing you understand be the barrier to your miracle? In Mark 11, there was an event that happened which we all know. This event, I want to read with me. From verse 13 to 14. Jesus and his disciples were walking past the road one day. 
Then verse 13. From a distance, Jesus Christ saw a fig tree that has leaves green on it. And he was happy. The Bible says he happily went there to the tree, thinking that he will eat something from it because he was hungry. See what understanding does. When you see a tree with green leaves, what does that tell you? Green is a sign of what? Fruitfulness, health. Amen? But see what understanding at times can do and betray you. Look at it. Are you together? Verse 14. Jesus Christ went there. He went to see if he will find any figs on it. But when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. Because it was not yet the season for figs. Look at this contrasting story. It was not yet the season. Why was it green then? Why was it green? It was on its way. It was on its way. <laughs> you see? That is what English people call fig tree. When you hear the expression fig tree, that means that it's not all things that beat us that is gold. It looks like it, but it's not it. That's a fig tree. I don't know whether you have experienced a fig tree in your life. Something your understanding tells you is there. Only for you to get there. And it's not there. Would that not make you sad? Obviously, that made Jesus Christ sad. And Jesus Christ said, from this day on, no one will ever eat out of you. Our understanding is Unless something is fruitful, it cannot be green. True? The color green is fruitfulness. But this is not always the case. I'm trying to prepare your mind that you understood something to be the case. But only for you to get there. On a closer look, it wasn't. That's the victory. Jesus Christ, no wonder he was happy, but that happiness did not last long, did it? When he saw the fig tree from a distance, the Bible said, he came, if happily, is that in your Bible? If happily, he might find anything. See, he came with enthusiasm only for him, not to last long. Then he found nothing. Sometimes what we see around, around us, don't look good from afar, only to for us to get closer and find out it's not like that, like that. Or we thought sometimes some people because they are big and they are wealthy, they've been in this country for long, so they'll be able to help. Only for you to find out that. It's not the case. Your help does not come from man. It only comes from who? From God. From God. This was why King Solomon stand and he said that word that we read. Trust in the Lord. With all your heart. And don't rely on your own understanding. What if you do, as in this case? You understand it with the cloud of judgment. Because things does not always turn out the way they appear. Another good example is a prophet. A prophet of Aya Kalima. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, from verse 6 to 7. This prophet God told him, by the name Samuel, to go and anoint one of the children of Jesse to be the next king. Remember the story? And he got there happily. You see, just like Jesus. If happily, he will find 
the person that God said will be the next king. I don't know how happily you have gone to a place only for that happiness not to last long. Because your understanding actually be clouded in judgment. I'm trying to tell you that when you trust in the Lord, your understanding, even though fails, God will rescue you. Amen. And he got there and he saw the gentleman, the near, tall and lanky. He said, That is it. This must be the king. But God said, No. That's what your understanding said. But trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord only. Don't rely on your understanding. Your understanding is good. But when it comes to trusting God, you have to put your understanding on one side. Otherwise, your understanding will stand in the way of the miracle. Hallelujah. Amen. God does not see the way man sees. Just because he is tall and strong does not mean that he is going to be. Our understanding can sometimes be cloud our judgment. To correct this, therefore, Let's always trust in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Trust in the Lord. In another instance, a king from another country commanded his soldiers because every plan that they had, the thoughts they have cooked up, was being revealed to this prophet. Everything they did in their bedroom the king, the, the prophet of the Lord, knew about it. Prophet who? Elisha. And so, the king said, who among you is a whistleblower? You know who's a, who's a whistleblower? <laughs> uh, I think I read today, I think it's also called troll. Troll. You know, they expose. You know, they, they, they make you annoyed. No, because they, they, they expose what you do in a way. Okay. Maybe that's not the case. Anyway. So, this man, Elisha, knew everything that the king was doing. And he exposed it, isn't it? And so, the king said, who among you is the whistleblower? Somebody said, it's not any one of us. But one prophet of God, Elisha. The king said, go and bring it. And so the king looking for Elisha. In 2 Kings chapter 6. Verse 14. So the king sent horses, chariots, and a large fighting unit. You know the time they came? In the night. See? The enemy always come when you are relaxed. To catch you from their ways. You know? Somebody said the time that you should be careful of not to fall into the hand of the enemy is a time immediately after jubilation. See? When you have just won something, something has just happened. See? Something good has just happened. So people are jubilating, they are, they, are, they, are, they are getting excited, isn't it? At that time, be careful not to fall into the hand of the enemy. Remember King, that King David, when the battle was on, they were winning. And so he took time off to relax. And that one changed his life. He relaxed with another man's, uh, another man's uh, wife. You know, time of tribulation. So the king sent horses and chariots. They came at the night and surrounded the city. Are you agree? Yes. That's what take. When the servant of the man of God got up in the morning and went outside, he saw troops, horses, chariots surrounding the city. So he asked the master, what shall we do? Every time you don't know what to do, ask. Amen? Amen. Every time you don't know what to do, what should you do? Ask. For ask God. Verse 16. Elisha answered, don't be afraid. We have more forces on our side than 
on the Sabbath. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. See? What is happening there? The servant Gehazi, his understanding was, was the understanding right? Was the understanding right? Yes. yes. He saw it. But it's not everything that he saw that is right. He saw the forces. Why are they not many? Yes. He saw it. We are not saying the understanding is not right. The understanding, the understanding is right. But we are only saying that there will be occasion whereby you have to let go of your understanding and let in the trust in God. Hallelujah. Amen. So people of God, wise up. Your understanding is good. It's good that you understand that when you walk well, you will hit well. It's good that you understand that when you go to school, you have a good job. But how many people went to school and got a good job? How many people got married and got children? How many people are Christians that are living and yet are in health? Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understand why because your understanding can be cloud your judgment when it comes to what to do hallelujah Amen. so Elisha uh, Gehazi rather he saw the forces your understanding was right so but your understanding of the situation is nothing compared to God your own understanding is nothing compared to God. That's why through the foolishness of the scripture we are saved. Because understanding is that when they see somebody carrying the scripture, carrying the Bible on the high street, it's jobless, isn't it? It's jobless. Yes. Go and find a good job to do. They don't even know the person that is talking to you is a doctor. See, but we don't walk by that. We walk by trust. Hallelujah. Amen. Is it done? It's finished. Praise God. Hallelujah. So that's the end of the psalm. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> so is it really finished there? You'll have given me some time to calm down. Where did you get your training from? <laughs> Praise God. You continue. Okay. All right. That's fine. Praise God, praise God. So, understanding therefore is very, is important but there's, your understanding does not stand a chance when it comes to what God has in mind for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 17. And Elisha prayed. You know I said when well, you don't know what to do, what should you do? Pray, pray. Ask. Ask God. And he's prayed. Ask God. Don't assume. Amen? Amen? Don't assume. Elijah prayed. So Elijah saw something that the servant did not see. Isn't it? That was the case. So every time he said, this is what my man said I should do. This is what by his statistics I've said we should do. Uh, remember, when it comes to God, forget about the statistics. Amen? Amen. Forget about the statistics. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. Excuse me, was this man blind before? Hello? Was he blind before? So that means that it's not everyone that opens his eyes that sees. Because this man was not blind, and yet Elijah prayed that God opened his eyes. So there is more that meets the heart. Isn't it? Open his eyes so that he can see. And he sees. Amen? Amen. And he sees. The mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about who? Elijah. It was true what the servant saw. Wasn't it true? true yeah. It was true what the servant saw when he could not see. It was even more true 
what he saw now that he sees. Amen? Amen. When Peter was with Jesus the previous day, back to that story, it was true what he saw. He saw the fig tree green. Well, on the, other, on the, the next day, the, the, the tree withered. Was it a tree? It was even true one. Hallelujah. Every time we don't know what to say, what to do, ask, pray about it. Don't move on. Pray about it. Don't say, my understanding says, no, no. Pray about it. Because the experience of Sister A, which is your understanding, and the experience of Brother B, which is your understanding, might not work for you. Amen. Amen. So what do you do? Ask, pray about it. Amen. Amen. Ask and pray about it. Ask A, S, seek, K, knock. Don't do anything until you hear God. That's what it means to trust in the Lord. You have been leaning on your own understanding. You have been doing it according to what you thought God wants. You have been doing it according to experience. You have been doing it according to what you read. But God says no. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Let God know we are trusting Him because we are doing nothing until God says so. Don't lean on your own understanding. It's not what you thought. It's not what you thought that God should do that he will do. <laughs> Elisha thought is done, they are done for. I mean the servants of Elisha thought they were done for. Master, master, alas. Well, Elisha knew better. Somebody always will know better. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why I said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And was it blind before? No. That means that you might open your heart, but you are not seeing what God is saying. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lay not on your own understanding. And lastly, Mark 11, again, verse 21. And Peter remembered. Everyone say, Remember. remember. He remembered. What did he remember? What Jesus said. He remember what Jesus Christ said yesterday. If you are going to trust God, you must not forget what God has said. Amen. Amen. Don't just come to church. Like I told you in the Bible story. Don't just say I'm a Christian when you don't study your Bible. Because the devil will soon shame you. Because he knows you carry nothing. But you see, because that time bomb is just a time bomb. It's going to pop anyway. The most important thing is that as a Christian, you in your Bible. Amen? Amen. It says, study to show yourself a proof of God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly divided the word of truth. Hallelujah. Amen. 2 Timothy 2. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So back to Mark 11, 21. And Peter remembered what Jesus had said. As you learn to trust God, try not to forget what God has said. That is what makes you to be a believer. You are not a Christian because you come to church. You are a Christian because you are like Christ. And you are a Christian not only because you are like Christ, you are a Christian because you believe in Christ. For as many that believe on him, even them that receive him, for as many that receive him, pardon me, and them that believe on him, he gave them the power to become sons of God. John 1 12. Hallelujah. Amen. 
So he said to him, this man, Peter, look at this master. Peter was surprised. The fig tree you cursed has dried up. Verse 22. Jesus said to them, who asked the question? How come? Jesus said to them, is Peter there? Peter asked the question, but Jesus answered them. In other words, the teaching of Jesus is for all of us. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said to them, have faith in God. That is, trust in God. Don't let your understanding stand in the way. Don't let understanding stop you from trusting in God. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for the entrance of your word that gives light and understanding to the simple. Is there anyone here that wants to say, let go of his understanding and accept to trust God? I don't know what you are believing God for. Is it for the money, for the job, for that promotion, for that house? For that car, I don't know what you are believing God for. Immigration paper, what is that that you are believing God for? Excuse me, it's not going to be by your understanding. I have done that, I have done that, I have this, I have that, so I should have it. No, it's going to be by trust. Absolute trust in the Lord. I want to make it up with God wherever you are. Maybe watching, maybe listening, wherever you are. Are you trusting God for the fruit of the womb? It's not going to be because you have done the IVF. It's not going to be because everyone in your family is fruitful. No, no, no. It's going to be because God says so. Trust in the Lord. I want to make it up with God this, this, this money. The Lord, I'm trusting you in this particular area. I'm trusting you for this healing. I'm trusting you for this fruit of the womb. I'm trusting you for this career. I'm trusting you to pass this exam. I'm trusting you to get my own paper. I'm trusting you, oh God, to have my own house. Whatever you are trusting God for, receive in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. Open up your heart to God this morning as well. If you have not given your heart to Jesus, open up your heart and ask the Lord to be your Lord and Master. Ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. Ask him to come into your heart. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we give you grace. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, clap your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.